Hello, you're very welcome along to county final day here in Pierce Stadium. What a fabulous day it is. The crowd is looking good, the weather's looking good, and we're in for some real intriguing and intense football. Hedford versus Toom kicking is at 3.45. Uh, just to run you through the team here, Shane Cunningham is my name, by the way. And the Hedford team, Neil Walsh, starts off in goal. Uh, the back line consists of Brian Carey, John Leahy, Kevin Carey, and uh, they, they'll hold the back. Half back line, Fenton Joyce, Reese O'Toole, Pat Joyce. And the midfield for Hedford Day will be Owen McHugh and yeah. Michael Day. Clive O'Sullivan is gone on holidays, who would normally start in the half position, half forward. Uh, we'd be interested to see who will be replaced by him. Uh, Alan Minahan, Eric Flynn is the remainder of the half forward line. Full forward line, then we've got Sean Meenan corner forward, followed by his brother Niall Meenan, who is the captain today in full forward. And the other corner forward, number 15, is Pat, J Pat Welch. Tune team then, uh, to try the opposition, we've got Darren McDonald in goal, Rory O'Connor, Brian O'Donnell, Mark Shallow uh, in the halfback in the halfback line, Killian Brown, Jason Kearns, Connor Rattigan. Midfield for Tune will be Brendan Devaney and Edward Canavan. While the half forward line consists of Alan O'Connell, Keane McNamara, and David Trayers. Full forward line for Tune trying to cause all the trouble will be Colin Quinn. And of course the Goway minor manager John Donlan will be alongside Dennis Murray. Throw in 345. Sure it's going to be a great game, so uh, do enjoy. We'll be back home. Throw in is just minutes away in this Hedford and Tum County final. Will it be Hedford, will it be Tum? We don't know. The toss, will have Hedford playing right to left so far as we know. But um, I think the teams are staying the way they are. Niall Meenan, the captain for Hedford. Just shook hands with Brendan Devaney, the captain of Tum. It's going to be some battle. Of course, Hedford beat the Aran Islands to get into this final on the, in the West Board uh, final. Hedford 3-13, the Aran Islands 2-10. So that should give Hedford a boost in today's game. Some of the subs that should see an entry into the Hedford team will Dylan Corbett, I'm sure, if they're struggling midfield, will come in, as will Aaron McDonough in the full forward line to bring that bit of pace and bit of fresh legs as the game goes on. The national anthem are on the veil. Great support from both teams out today. Both Hedford and Shum coming in their hundreds. The blues seem to be to my right, the reds seem to be to my left. Well separated, there'll be no helps or skeletons going on. That's all going to be left to the players on the pitch. And so as the players take their positions, we hope for a great game. The last time Hedford won the Junior A Championship was back in 1994. And captain on the day was Tommy Ban at that time. They haven't won it before that since 1966 so just twice Hedford have won the Junior A Championship they're looking for the third time today could be the day you wonder why the atmosphere is feeling so good will it be club they're actually celebrating their 125th year this year so what a fantastic day it would be to end off the year if Hedford were to win this Junior A Championship and move up into intermediate and ready for next year's championship now that the ball is organised our referees today can get this game underway. Oh McHugh, Michael Day for Hedford, Brendan Devaney and Edward Kavanagh. Kavanagh uh, up for the midfield for Tune. Midfield will be a serious, serious play in uh, it'd be Hedford's target, target to him in any way to pump ball into those fast meanings in the full forward line, if we can do so. And there it is, Hedford versus Tune, just underway. It's the number 11 for Tune, it's Keane McNamara went up for that throw in. National fact. And now ball out the far side, just Wells get it out. Owen McHugh boots it up, looking for Alan Meenahan, doing his dance, but the two man just gets in there behind him. Misjudged by Alan Meenahan. Kind of a wayward pass there, but wins back. Well done by Fenton Joyce. Joyce, another weird pass, but did well was Owen McHugh. Great block down there by Connor Rattigan. And uh, referees hits to play on. A few skips can in, but you'd expect that. High ball put in top, Alamina, and he may be small, but he's well able to win a ball. 
Alamina just wins it just inside. Will he get there? No, it's going to be a 45 for Hedford. And uh, excitement already in these early minutes. I can see there number 18, just trying to clarify who that is. It's obviously a sub, it could be Shane Walsh, who came in instead of Clive Sullivan. Going by, going by the programme here. This is Seth Hedford's low ball, it's gone, it's gone for another 45 if I'm right, it is. Another 45, another chance. Anything can happen for these low 45s. A point of a ball could lead to a quick and early goal. But you feel whoever gets the first score might settle them. It's clear down the back from the Chum. Chum trying to work their way out. Gets it in, look, trying to find uh, Conor Rattigan. He gets it up now to tune number 11, Keane McNamara. McNamara sending it into the full forward line. Being held off by the back. Now on the comes Alan O'Connell. Now number 70 for Tune racing out the far side. He's plenty of options inside if he boots it in. Plenty of movement. And Tune, do they get their first goal? They don't. Now he was the Callistran man who is now playing a goal for Hedford. Makes his first appearance and shows the man that he's there. Owen McHugh has Fenton Joyce to his side if he can find Fenton. But instead he goes back. Now, long ball from the head for defence. Trying to find Pat Welch. It doesn't quite get Pat. And Sean Manon, Sean Meenan, trying to get his uh, thing around the ground. You can see there the ground is slippy, despite the little rain it has made. And the St. Michaels and the Sotil match just before this would not help. Now, Brendan Devaney, the captain for Tune, sends it back there to number 18 for Tune. It's a low ball, it's a bad ball. And Neil Welch can pick it up again. It's a bit slippy. Fenton Joyce. Doing his best to get to it. Hattle and who's hit on the back referee is just going to save wave play on. Owen McHugh on his own. And steps to move forward. Plenty of room ahead of him. John Leahy now. Back to Owen McHugh. Good pass and Owen McHugh. Does he find a man? Looks for Pat Wedge. Alamina gets out in front. Meenhan down. Quick young skillful player. Finds his brother Sean Meenan. And inside there is Nine Meenan, his brother. The Meenan brother is absolutely working wonders. Sean Meenan. Shot it to his point. He got a goal. An early goal for Sean Meenan and indeed for Hedford. And that surely will settle them. Just the start that Hedford needed. Lovely one ball by, Niall, uh, by Alan Meenan. Sent it into Sean Meenan. Niall was running inside. But Sean said, no, I'll take my score, Niall. Next time it's for you. But uh, he rattled the net. And it's Hedford, one goal. Tune, no score. And here they come again. Our Hedford on fire. Is this their year? We don't know. Pat Joyce does as well. Matches his nickname. Nate Nylminen. Lovely little ball with the left foot. Lovely little score. And it's 1-1. And Hedford get off to a flying start. Lovely little pass by Pat West that time. Of course, Pat, an expert in not only football, but the darts. Every Friday night on the tavern, the Campbell's Tavern, he's been banned because he keeps getting the 180. So, uh... <laughs> I think Pat Welsh can stick to the football for a while. Foul there by Sean Meenahan uh, on the Edward Cavan. Now, captain for Tune sends a lovely ball out there to his corner forward. He's racing forward. Owen McHugh trying to tackle on referees this play on, but now he's pulled it back for the free. John Donnan stands over this free. A well known man around the Galway, the Galway County Board. John Donnan from about 25 metres out to try and set the tunes nerves. And that is straight between the posts. Great score, that might settle down tune. Hedford will need to keep pressing on because what we do know from tune in the past is that you cannot give up. Oh, Fenton Joyce. Of course, his, uh, his father, Dick Joyce, played here when they won that 1966 Junior A Championship. That was the first time that Hedford won it, and his son is here today. And now, Reese O'Toole, coming forward with the ball. Send the low ball into the Minans. Pat Welch goes up for it. One hand, though, wasn't enough to beat uh, Rory, or to beat Brian O'Donnell down the back. Toome tried to break forward. And now here it is, Edward Canvan. And Edward Canavan wins, uh, wins the free. Conor Rattigan. Running forward, sends a lovely ball 
in on top of John Donnelly. Can John Lee get the better of him? But John Donnelly, John Donnelly doing his best. And he has, uh, he has, he has Dennis Murray out the wing, but Dennis Murray didn't see it. It's overcarried. John Donnelly overcarried. A free to Hedford, and uh, that's certainly in the favour of the Hedford supporters. Michael Day gets his name on the ball. Back as far as uh, John Leahy. Or no, Fenton Joyce. Fenton Joyce sends it in. Looking for players. It's a bit scrappy down there, but uh, Riso Tool trying to get in as well. As is Alamina. And Alamina, with his pace, he should be able to get past uh, Rory O'Connor. Alamina sends the ball in on top of his brother, Sean Monan. Sean Meenan. Uh, but it comes away the full back, or the uh, half back, Jason Kearns for Tune. Sends it up. Tune working up the field. Slowly and cushy. In for John Donnan. John Lee is going to be marking as tight as he can to John Donnan today. As John Donnan breaks in on his left. Turns in on the right. John Donnan's going to take a free again. He was pulled by John Lee. And the referee spots it this time. So it's going to be free and no to Tune. The management uh, team for Hedford will be quite happy in these opening minutes. Tom Flynn, Kevin Lee and Jurley. And... Uh, they were quite pleased with their team, having scored 1-1 to just the one point. Seven minutes gone. And there, John Donnan gets the second score for Toom. On the scoreboard. Three of the Welsh brothers playing for Hedford. You have Shane Welsh, Niall Welsh and uh, Pat Welsh, as well as the three Minans up front. So uh, a family connections right across the Hedford team. Hopefully they can bring wonders. Neil Welsh in goal down there. Uh, he's actually a Caller Strand man, would you believe? But uh, he's playing a goal for Hedford and he's going to do his almighty best. Sends it out. Reese O'Toole. Plenty of room to come down the line. Reese O'Toole gets the return pass. Now, he sends it in there, of course. Now, Kevin Carey. Kevin Carey looking over as far as uh, Sean Meenan. Meenan with his left boot. Did he get his foot around it? Umpire's not happy with it. Umpire says no. It's a wide ball. That's the first wide for Hedford, I think. Things seem to be going well for Hedford so far in terms of winning position. But uh, they really do need to stop giving away the freeze down the back. As you can see what John Donnelly can do to you. Ball come up, it runs down to three Hedford players. And uh, Reese O'Toole is the one to try and clear it. It's blocked, it's pretty kind of a lazy kick, but uh, Fenton Joyce does his best to try and get back. And now here comes uh, Mark Shallow on the run. Mark Shallow sends it off to the number 18 for Toome. Out the far side, it's coming in by Hedford. But number seven for Hedford is back there. That's Pat Joyce. And uh, Patrick Joyce did absolutely brilliant to get away. Now, here we come on the ball again. It's Eric Flynn. Eric sends it off to Owen McHugh. Owen, long ball down. But it only goes as far as uh, Edward Canavan. And he takes a return pass again. Tune play wide. Kind of a hand pass in game for Tune, as you can see. But it goes back into the Tune number 19. And uh, did, was there a block on that? I think there was. I think it's going to be a 45 to Tume. It's actually a wide ball. Owen McHugh uh, sends a lovely ball. In as far as Alaminen, low ball. As you can see the splash of water there. You can only imagine how wet the pitch must be. But uh, with the fine weather we have today, there's no question about it that the ball can stay reasonably dry. Now, Jason Kearns for Tume. Running up, sends it into his midfielder. Gets, him, gets the pass back. Jason Kearns, lovely ball into the uh, corner forward. He takes off from his David Tyres and... Uh, John Donnan gets yet another shot at goal. His third free will it be three out of three. He's certainly on, on target with his freeze for the, for the opening minutes. Clive Sullivan, who couldn't be with us today, is actually on holidays. He's gone on a cruise, so we wish Clive the very best of luck and hopefully the Hedford can bring back the silverware and also bring him the good news. As is the Kane brothers all the way out in Australia, Adam Kane and Joe Kane, and wishing their best wishes to Hedford bright nearly yesterday morning. So, John Donnan. To put just two, one between the team. Right in front of the goal, he's put it over, as you'd expect. One point to Hedford's uh, somewhat dream start with the goal, and the point to follow has been brought back to just a one-point gap. Neil Walsh. And that's a big kick. Up goes Mike Day. Big man, catch it clean. He has uh, sends it down to Pat Welch. Pat Welch, better known as Match. 
Matt sends it back now to uh, Michael, uh, Michael Day again. Number 18 for Hedford sends a lovely ball over the bar. Shane Walsh, I believe, is wearing the number 18 jersey. Well done, Shane. And that brings the gap back to two points in favour of Hedford. I think if Hedford work more as a team, you know, with the hand pass and watch the players on the run, they can really break down, in particular, the Tune half back line because uh, that seems to be where Tune are weakening just in these early minutes. Now, Keane McNamara sends it on to his teammate, the number 10 man, Alan O'Connell. Alan O'Connell trying to be stopped by, uh, by Kevin Keary out the, out the far side. Kevin Keary seems to throw a few slaps, but uh, he's still turning to turn in. Tune, get another score. Do they a goal? They do. It's gone over that bar. And it really is tit for tat. Michael Day, to win it in midfield, sends a kind of a wayward ball, but that ball can go anywhere, it's gone over the head, it's gone in for Sean Meenan, sends it out to Pat Welch. Pat Welch, this should be a good score for Hedford, it certainly is, a score out of nothing, a missed mistake by the, by the tune back line, and uh, Match, no messing about him. The reason he's called Match, by the way, is uh, everything that comes out of his mouth is, is about a game, it's either Sky Sports, GAA, it's Match, 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 so, Pat match, better known as. No, Darren McDonald, lovely kick out. Will it favour Owen McHugh? It doesn't, but it favours Fenton Joyce. And now it's Shane Welch once again. He's playing a blinder, Pat Welch matches inside. Matches straight in, bearing on goal. Will he go for the goal? He does, it's gone in! <laughs> or is it gone in? It looked to me it was gone in. But I think there's a hole in the net. So what's the referee going to do here? A 45. Well, I would have swore that that was a goal, as did the hundred of Hedford supporters that are here to my right. But uh, nevertheless, we've got a 45. It's not quite gone yet. And Shane Welch to stand over this ball. The goal could still be alive. And he takes his point. Great solid kick, Shane Welch. Playing well. And that changed the score to 1-4. To four points, leaving that three point deficit between the teams. Well, Brian Carey's doing very well down the back there. He's the oldest man on the team. So, uh, according, to, according to the management. Hedford just need to take their markers and watch their runners. Now, Brendan Devaney. Well blocked down though, by Mike Day, it was actually blocked by Fenton Joyce, Mike Day picked up the rebound, but uh, Mike Day running down, he has Pat Match inside, and he's all, or he's uh, Niall yeah. Meenan, Niall Meenan trying to get around his uh, full back. It, a free in, Sean Meenan will take this free, the left footer player, we saw him work wonders with that left foot, many times throughout the championship. And as you see down here, Tres Leahy, the physio doctor, uh, is just attending Mike, Michael Day. I'm not aware of any injuries that he may have had, but uh, his knee seems to be at home, I think. And I'm sure Tres Leahy, with her qualification, that she'll be able to get him back in action as soon as possible. Dylan Corbett warming up. So uh, that would be a concern to Hedford if Michael Day did have to come off a key man in midfield alongside Owen McHugh. Dylan taking off the uh, t-shirt, I'm sure he'll come in as a while anyway, if Michael is not able to uh, continue on. And that applause is for Michael Day, I think, but that may be the end of him. And that disappointment on his face shows it all, that he would only love to play on. Nevertheless, number 24, Dylan Corbett, who still plays minor for Hedford, and of course, county football for Galway minor comes in. How will he play in this game? And now Kevin Keary doing his best to get it in. The linesman waves up. It's going to be a free, I think, over the far side. It's actually a free to Tume, a uh, free to Hedford for, for over Curry. And uh, great movement in midfield there. Shane Welch is making life impossible for his marker. Connor Rattigan. 
And now David Trayers sends a lovely ball in over the far side. But uh, Kevin Carey doing his best to try and get it. It's swiped up uh, by Owen McHugh, who's playing somewhat like a little sweeper back there. Sends it in on top of the Minans and Pat Match. Pat Match breaks it down for Alan Minan. Alan Minan, is that just a bit too short? I think it is. And plus it's gone to the right and wide. Shane Wells seems to be playing quite well in the, uh, the half forward line for Hedford. Uh, breaking a lot of balls down to the Minans, as is Pat Match. So uh, Pat Match been on form for the last couple of matches as well. So. Uh, Owen McHugh breaks it down as far as Niall Meenan. Alain Meenan makes a run as is Shane Welch out the side. So does uh, his brother Pat Welch. But it all comes to nothing and Chum come away with the ball. Until it's run back by Eric Flynn. The referee is going to give a free out. Things start to get a bit unsure there, but uh, anyway, comes away Keane McNamara. Well blocked down though again by Owen McHugh, who's actually playing quite well in midfield, despite losing his partner there, Michael Day. Just be interested to see how himself and Dylan Corbett will, uh, will figure out. Should be no bother to them. Chum sideline ball. Hedford need to mark up and watch the back there as uh, number 15 now, of course, Dennis Murray gets in, tries to get inside his marker. With his lovely left foot, it's a neat point, it's a nice point. And it's gone over the bar. So Hedford just management to stay on top by that three or four uh, scores. But Chum still keeping in touch, still letting them know that they are there. The tension needed down in the, uh, I think it's to Kevin Carey. Complaining that John Dunnan had something to do with, but Trace Lee will sort that out. A few subs warming up for Hedford. Aaron McDonough. Of course, uh, if he is to be entered into the game, he will start in around the uh, forwards, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Particularly corner forward in the minor, in the minor championships is where he loves to play and uh, be, he'd be a contribution to the team as well. Two Carey brothers down the back, one of them receiving the tension. Uh, number two, Brian Carey, I think that is. But Kevin Carey, the other side, is, uh, is a is certainly a key figure down the back line as well. So just to clarify things, that was actually Kevin Carey uh, getting a bit of attention there, but he seems to be back on his feet again, thanks to Therese Leahy. And Neil Welch can get this game underway again. Dylan Corbett going to go for this ball. Well, he's going to watch it anyway, but uh, the tune number eight wins it. Fenton Joyce just speeds in there. Uh, and Ramsden picks it up and gets the applause for it, wins his free, and that was a very wor well worthy free. Now, comes away with it, Shane Walsh. Long ball in on top of the full head for full forward. Is it going to be Pat Welch, who's waiting for the bounce? But just misjudged it there, and uh, did well to keep it in. Chum doing their struggling to get it away, uh, uh, but they can come out slowly and surely. No, Pat Joyce trying to get stop to him, but still no good. Eric Flynn is there. Trying to put a stop. They do win it back. Sean Meenan sends a lovely ball now in as far as Alan Meenan. Alan Meenan doesn't use his skills to try and get past him. Yes, he does. I had a figure he was going to turn inside. But uh, comes back now to his brother, Sean Meenan. Meenan's going to take a shot from there. Pat matches inside. It's gone over the bar. Some score from that area. Powell had that covered if it was to drop short. So a well worked score by the head for team having won it back just in midfield. Sun beginning to glare here in Pierce Stadium for what is a spectacular day, county final. And um, Toome and Hedford, somewhat neighbors, but they will be rivals on, on the pitch here today. Crowded in midfield, who comes away as the half back for Toome. And uh, he's trying to stop by Dylan Corbett, who knocks him to the ground. And comes back in there, now is Kevin, uh, is Risa too. Risa gone for a ball management the head from management saying it's their ball the linesman goes against them it's going to be line ball to Chum. now Brendan Devaney who's tried to captain Chum over the line if they can or even get a few more scores number 19 now for Chum. sends it out but it's a where we're passing head for win it back Alamin and look back where he is sends the ball into his brother Nylamin who does very well he is showing me out the wing, but Alan's going to find Pat Match inside. Pat Match did very well to win that. 
And Sean Minden's running in the side if Pack and spot him, but Pack's going to keep going himself. And uh, now he's got Sean, which just caught out by the number six for Chum, playing very well, Jason Kearns. And uh, Chum come away with it again, an opportunity that could have been something. It ended up being nothing. But uh, he's gone back to square one again, and Hedford will rebuild. Brian Carey sends it up, calling for it in the middle of the field. It's in the Corbett, but uh, the referee is going to give a free from where the ball landed there. Uh, Kevin Brian Carey, sorry, is going to take this free. Gets things underway quite quickly. Now, Riso two racing forward. Plenty of players. Alamin is in his left, but he just didn't see him running. Riso two wants to take a score for his own, and perhaps he might have just perhaps should have passed there. As he had Alamin on his left, Sean on his right. Who have plenty of pace to run in on goal. Now, David Treyers for Tume, racing forward. Sends it in to Dennis Murray. But it's just asking a bit much of Dennis and uh, was out for a head for sideline ball. Tume rebuild again now. Keen McNamara. Lovely ball in, but out comes Kerry. Uh, it's going to be a free, actually, free in. No, uh, Chum doing their very best, but gets out in front of Alamina and wins it back. Had to release the ball, did very well there. And number nine, now Edward Canavan runs away with the ball, sends it into John Donlan. John Donlan had players running left and right. He gets it in there to the number 10 for Chum, who is uh, Alan O'Connell. Alan O'Connell down in his acres of space ahead of him, and he's going to use it. Bearing in on the goal, has to come back to Dennis Murray. Dennis Murray just holding up, holding up play, and uh, Brian Carey doing his best to hold him out. With that left foot drop sharp, Neil Walsh as well to hold on to it, and uh, brings it out. Dylan Corbett, who just on, showing no fear in this Junior A Championship. Sean Minahan trying to find his two brothers. We're on there, falls down to Niall, who are breaks it down to Alan. Alamina can just get grip of it. He can, it's gone for 45. He made life difficult for the goalkeeper. Perhaps if he could just grab it the first time, he might have been able to get his, his body under control. But uh, nevertheless, I think they're going to set for a, a 45. Shane Wells is going to strike this one again. Aaron McDonough, number 30, is coming in for, uh, if I can just see, it's Eric Flynn. We would have figured that would happen in the half forward line. Aaron, where he loves to play. The round of applause for Eric Flynn. So that's two Galway minor players on the team so far. Dylan Corbett and Eric, er, Aaron McDonough. As you see, Shane Welch just floats that over the bar. 1-6 to 5 points. And the Hereford management team will be quite pleased with that. As you see, Shane Welch urging his players just to up their up the tempo while they have the, the right foot forward. Uh, now, big kick out. And up goes uh, Fenton Joyce. Puts it down to Pat Welch. Pat Welch finds Niall Meenahan. Who Aaron McDonough makes a storming run. Niall Meenan didn't see him. He goes for his own score. Does he get it? He does. It's amazing, you always see it. They catch the high ball, they turn on their left, they shoot almost without looking, as if they know where to score. Uh, Posar, and somewhat magically gets it over the bar. So Darren McDonald, the tune goalkeeper, will have his hands full, I'm sure, if any of the Meanhan brothers, or indeed Pat Welch, gets in on in one to one. In fact, it's nearly a, it's not a 50-50, it's a 90-10, I think, percent chance of him saving because uh, that's just how dangerous they are. Pat Welch on the ball. Picks out, did he just stand over the line? Linesman says play on anyway. And Fenton Joyce storms forward. Niall Meenan calling for the ball inside. Fenton Joyce still doesn't know where to go. He gets Shane Welch instead. Shane Welch again being pushed back by the Tune defence. Fenton Joyce hits it anywhere. Uh, Pat Match goes up for it. He's, he's been knocked. Aaron McDonough goes down, tries to get for it, but it's a free out. And uh, the fullback, for Tune, Brian O'Donnell, gets things underway quickly. Uh, 
but yet Toome seem to be a bit nervous, seem to be a bit on the edgy team and can't find their men. So it's uh, gone for a, a line ball to Helford and Shane Welch will kick this ball in. Now, Shane Welch to John Leahy. Leahy, the full back for Hedford, storming forward. Big kick into the uh, full forward line of Hedford. But uh, back there to pick it up is the captain, Brendan. But it goes back to the little thing here going on, and uh, the Laminas, and there's a few of the Laminas, but it's a free out at the end of it. And just took my eye off the game for one second to hear the crowd roaring. And uh, you just don't know what can happen in this game. Anything can happen. When a team seems to have the ball and storming forward, they just lose at any second. So uh, just reaching the half an hour mark now to score one seven to five points. Hedford will be happy with that opening first half, I'm sure. Although the job is not quite done yet. Oma McEwen field for Hedford, of course, just back from Poland. Uh, so uh, he had his big rest and ready for today's game. As is Daraban, who's just back from Oz. So uh, Daraban didn't start today, but he is number 20. I'm sure we might see an introduction from him later on, if needs be. Hedford know what it takes at that extra edge to win to win a county final. I would not want to lose this one, having lost two years ago. Alan Minahan, quick little kick with the right foot. That would be some score for us to go over. But it's gone left and wide, and that's the end of the play, end of the action for the first half. And uh, the applause seems to be louder for the Hedford supporters. But both teams in for the rest, and the Hedford management will be quite pleased with that. We'll have live coverage for the second half in just about 10 to 15 minutes. And so, the Hedford team are back on the pitch to join the tune for the second half. Which a half will really, really decide who walks away with the silverware. Team so far stay the same. Dylan Corbett and Owen McHugh in midfield for Hedford. And uh, there's no major changes so far, but we will let you know uh, as the game goes on. As I can see them. So a ball will be helpful now, and uh, we're free to get this game underway once again. And the game is underway. Dylan Corbett tries to get his hand in there, but the comes down. Pat Joyce uh, flicks it off to Owen McHugh, who picks it up. Owen McHugh wins the free for Hedford. And uh, Hedford once again get the better start. But uh, Patrick Joyce seems to have hurt himself in that little contribution there. So it requires a little bit of attention. Reese O'Toole stands over this free. Dylan Corbett makes it to run, but Reese decides to go along. In on top of uh, Niall Meenan. So does his best to keep it in play, but Linesman says that it's already gone out. And it's going to be a line ball to shoot. Lovely runner there, you see number 21 for Tune. Uh, Michael Mannion has been replaced, so he's, he gets his contribution. And he pulled him back. And uh, that was uh, Finton Joyce, who won the free for Hedford. Gets it on, Shane Welch now. Kind of a low, powerful ball into Alan Meenan. I suppose Alan likes it low. So Alan Meenan doing his damnedest best to get it out. It's picked off the, picked off the ground. Going to head for number seven, so uh, unfortunately it's going to be free back out to Tune. Now, Michael Mannion coming forward for Tune. Sends it into uh, Dennis. Uh, referee says it's actually another pick off the ground, so it's a free back to head for it. Scrappy start to the opening second half, but uh, referee bringing it forward an extra few metres. Now, Brian Carey is going to take this free. Uh, and attention down the uh, Hedford full forward line. Oh. If I'm right, I think it's Niall Meenan who's down. I'm not quite sure what happened now, but uh, he seems to be up on his feet. It's actually Pat Welch, Pat Welch I think. Very hard to see from this angle. Pat Welch it is, match. Okay, so uh, trying to get us back onto his feet again. 
he should be okay. The free says carry on, and Owen, uh, Owen McHugh will take this free. Or look for the free, rather. Shane Welch taking it. Shane Welch looking for Sean Meenahan. Gets it to Sean. Sean trying to get past the half-back. Does quite well. Does he win himself a free? He doesn't. He's going to stay going forward. Sean Meenahan with his left foot sends it over the bar. A beautiful score, and he doesn't miss much when it comes to taking it from that angle. So that should settle Hedford and a great start to the first half, but a brilliant start again to the second half. Now big kick out by Darren McDonald. Doing well to get that for a tune was Adam O'Connell. Who's still carrying the ball and is tugged, he's pulled and he's going to go into free. Now, Michael Mannion for Tune. Lays it off to his, uh, his colleague. Ball goes scrappy, John Leahy racing, but uh, gets there instead is Pat Joyce. Pat Joyce as well, clipping up to Owen McHugh, who sends it out to Shane Wedge, lets it go through his fingers. But uh, Fintan Joyce as well to recover, and now Owen McHugh on the ball. Owen McHugh, little sidestep, works very effectively. Now Dylan Corbett gets it back out to Shane Welch. Shane Welch turned, did well. He was pushed as he took that kick, and the referee acknowledged that. Give him the free into Hedford. And a bit of pushing going on between uh, Brian Carey and the substitute for Tune, Michael Mannion. So uh, I think Brian with Brian is just football on his mind, so he just doesn't want doesn't want to get into any trouble. Especially not in the county final when every man counts. And that has just been put over the bar to put Hedford an extra point ahead. So uh Jerley, Kevin Lee. And the Hedford management team will be quite content uh, in the opening second half, the, the way their team has uh, played. Long look out again by the Tune goalkeeper. Comes into Brian Carey, sends it out to Alan Meenahan. Meenahan just couldn't get Griffin as you see slips. But uh, Tune tried to break away. And now Michael Mannion. Tune number 18, Jared Kniff. Long ball in, John Lee tries to stand under it. But John Lee holds his man with number 27 for Tune. Uh, wins it back. And now Michael Mannion is on goal. Just five, six, seven players back for Hedford there. Pulls on the ground. It's gone to the left. And it's gone for a uh, 45. And it could have been a could have been a dangerous moment there for uh, Hedford. John Donnan to try and at least get the first score for Tune in the second half. He goes short. Gets the return pass from his teammate. With his right foot, it's a good score, looks good, it is good. It's gone over the bar. And that brings Tune score to the first score in the second half. The crowd getting heated up, as this is a crucial time in the match, because any score is an important score. And I watch, long puck out. Owen McHugh catched it, but loses out uh, to the Tune captain goes to his left. Long ball. Put in as far as the tune number 27. Trying to be stopped there by Brian Carey, but is this going? That'll be a good score for it over. And it did go over. And that was a fantastic score. Brian Carey kind of protesting as if to say that how how is that over? The referee is going down to his linesman. Just to make sure of that last score, I'm sure. I think Hawkeye would be would be necessary here in this situation. But unfortunately, that technology just isn't quite, hasn't quite reached Galway yet. Now, John Donnan has been talked to for that little push. He's been at it a while, so uh, he's been tugging and pushing his players. <laughs> it's not just marked by the one player. But he gets the yellow card for that. And rightly so, I presume. Neil Walsh, urgent and quick to get this game underway. Well caught in midfield by Brendan Devaney. Now John Donlan out the wing, who just gets it into uh, Michael, uh, into number 18 for Tume. And uh, Fitton Joyce 
great block down. It comes away a race or two. Now Owen McHugh. Uh, Owen McHugh. He should get rid of it before he gets caught. Advantage play to Hedford. Aaron McDonough. Racing forward as he loves to do. There's no stopping Aaron McDonough unless you literally pull him down. And it's just done. He was tripped actually. He was tripped. It's going to be a free out to Toome. And uh, I think that that run from Hedford will be by Aaron will be well applauded by the Hedford uh, Hedford support. Pat pulls. And that was that was uh, clearly clearly free to Toome. So long ball in the top. John Lee just miss out and Finter and Joyce tried to get the block he couldn't but that was always a score from the minute he caught it in his hand it leaves it at Hedford 1-9 Toome 8 points so not much between the teams and uh, number 4 for Hedford Kevin Carey just went down in that last incident Carey, of course, spent a time in, in the good old Oz as well, brother to Brian, and uh, a key figure in that back line as we've seen throughout the first half and indeed the early moments in the second half. But Brian back to his feet, gets the applause from the Hedford team, and Neil Walsh gets this game underway once again. Well caught by the uh, Toome midfield now to John Dolan on to Michael Mannion referee has his hands in the air I think that not going to count either way it came off the post but uh, John Lee comes away with that looking for a bit of support and that's a bad ball but really there was no one he could have given it to Hedford as well to work as a unit to get that back and away comes Kevin Carey long ball into the Minahans Niall Minahan runs Alan Minahan is right behind him if he can spot him Niall Minahan Needs to get away from his marker first, the half back. And it works out lovely for Alaminen, running in. Alaminen, real quick pace. Number two has a job to get up behind him. Alaminen hand passes it. He knocks the umpire. And he's gone over the bar. The umpire experiencing what it's like out in the pitch. And maybe next time, that might be a signal that the umpire will have to give head for the point. Or Alaminen will do the same again. Anyway, Chum, come on. And John Lee judged that perfectly. He knew that the bounce was going to hop over the head of number 27 and let it go for a head for goal kick. So as you see, both teams have seemed to up the tempo. And uh, just to keep the momentum going would be another bonus. Owen McHugh. Or is Shane Welch well caught in midfield? Now it's Owen McHugh. Sends a lovely ball, being a pull and dragon referee acknowledges it's a free out which looked to be free to Hedford, but it's going to be free out to Tune. And uh, they get on to it, no nonsense. Number four, Mark Shallow. Now to number 10, Mark Shallow gets the return pass. Well blocked down by Owen McHugh. I think the ball just literally aimed at him. And the big man got in the way. Now, Sean Minahan did well to win that ball back. Sean did well to push off his player. And he was tugging and pulling on the went to free. And applauded by the Hedford support. He's going to come back and Riso Tool is going to be the one to bounce this in around the, the danger area. No one really make much movement, but uh, with no option but to hit it in. And away come Chum. No, Mark Shallow. Storming forward the ball. Long ball in to uh, Dennis Murray. Murray. Uh, been marked well of course by Kevin Carey but just makes space for himself is it enough? it's not enough it's gone to the far side of the goal it's gone wide and uh, gives Hedford a chance to regroup once again Darren Moore and of course one of the subs warming up down here to the right and of course uh, will, he, will he be will he feature in the game? time will tell long puck out again punched down by the Toome captain to his teammate number 7 Conor Rattigan who gets it away now to Michael Mannion. Michael Mannion sends a lovely ball in there to Dennis Murray. 
Murray back now, of course, to tune number seven, who's racing forward. Uh, will he take his point? He does. But he didn't hit the crossbar. Well, he takes the point, he's comfortable with that. Uh, that's Tune's fourth score of the second half. Neil Walsh aiming for Dylan Corbett, who gets a punch, as does Pat Joyce. Aaron McDonough up there as well. And Oma Q is up there, but uh, number 11 for Tune wins it away. And Oma Q seems to put a little ahead. I think it was Oma Q who seemed to throw in the fist. It was. A Tune player is down. Referee's going to have word. That could be an instant. An instant worry for the uh, head for management having already lost Michael Day, depending on what the referee's decision is here. Uh, uh, yellow card, the boo from the Tune supporters. Possibly thought that it could have been a bit harsh. A bit of switching going on here, and as you see, the uh, Brendan Devaney, the Tune captain, made it to run there. John Donnan spotted him, but he said, This is my score, I'm going to go for it. And he gets it. A goal between the team now. With 16 minutes gone into the second half. It still is all to play for. Hedford have been upper hand and Tune have not got the upper hand on Hedford at all in this game. Hedford have been the lead throughout the game. Will that be the way? Hedford fans certainly hope so. There's uh, Neil Walsh there. Pictured with the, the sun hat on as the sun is shining here for a glorious evening at Pierce Stadium. Uh, and now, Tune come on the force again. Uh, Alan O'Connell looking for his teammates. Gets it out. Tune going into the corner again. Number 12, David Trears. Now for number 27, who's practically unmarked there. He's raising and bearing in on goal. Finch and Joyce have to go to meet him. But it's gone over the bar. Darren Moran for Hedford. About to be introduced here on the sideline. Just who will be taking off will be an interesting call. That's three minor team on the junior, three minor players on the junior A team for Hedford. And Darren, as presumed, will go down the back to replace uh, either John Meehy or Kevin Carey. I think it's Kevin Carey who's gone. Better words, of course, messages being passed from the management team to Darren Moran. He's running around telling the players what he wants done. And yes, it is Brian Carey has been pushed right out to the corner and Darren Moore has taken the half-back line. So, centre-back Darren will play. Uh, and coming off is... Did any player come off? I think it's Riso 2. No, Riso 2 is waving play on. Not sure it came off there for Darren Moore, but anyway, Darren Moore is in on the... Uh, he's in on the centre-back. And well caught there by Shane Walsh, who sends it off to uh, Fintan Joyce. Right, replaced, yeah, Darren Moore just news us in. Darren Moore replaced uh, number 15, Pat Welch. Of course, Pat Welch, the corner forward, who's been an outstanding first half and uh, just had to change the tactics about, I'm sure, the head management team, particularly in the back. So Darren Moore now uh, makes entry alongside two of his Galway teammates, Dylan Corbett and Aaron McDonough. Uh, they should make a difference. Hedford haven't scored in a, a good couple of minutes, so they need something out of this. Reese two, well held. Breaking forward, he advances his his jersey is pulled, and he'll get a chance to uh, set the team and just settle the forwards, but he goes back. Finch and Joyce, or should I say Brian Carey, sorry. Racing forward, uh, gets the ball into Alan Meenahan. Meenahan with Aaron McDonough to his side. It's around the neck though, and he gets a uh, he gets a free for that Alamina hand. So uh, this is another chance for Hedford to reassess and perhaps get something out of this attack.
Oh, uh, ball coming in to uh, Pat Joyce. After that free there, it's gone out the side to Fenton Joyce. Fenton Joyce on his right foot goes to the right and the wide. And uh, at least, at least there's aim towards the post and it wasn't taken off to my bazoom. Maybe as good as a score, but uh, Hedford will need another score or two if they are to secure at their score lead and their lead throughout the game. Oh, McHugh points it down, lovely to Sean Meenahan, who's racing forward. Gives it into Niall Meenan, just asking a bit much of Niall Meenan, but it comes back. Darren Morn, will he get his point in this county final? Just dropped short. Unlucky for Darren Morn, who loves to brace forward when the space is there. Dylan Corbett goes up, goes up hard and gets a bad fall. Michael Mannion falls down on top of him. Dylan Corbett seems to have been a butter down there but Darren Moore once again it's another it's another low ball just can't get his full hundred Dylan Corbett's still down but uh, Michael Mannion messing and playing down the back head for doing their best to crowd him down but Tune burst forward and get out of there was that picked off the ground head for people say it was but anyway Alan O'Connell comes away with it Alan O'Connell Stopped there by uh, Brian or Kevin Carey. It's pushed out of the line, but it's going to be a free to Tune. And John Donnan stands up. Now, long ball pumped in on top of the head for full back line, it could have gone anywhere, yeah. but now Neil Welch did well and gets out to Fintan Joyce. Who solos forward, and now Darren Morn, who too loves to get forward. Lovely ball out, Owen McHugh. He just gets to it in time, Owen McHugh now running forward. There's plenty of players in there, if he lets it in, but I said he's gonna come back to Shane Welch. Shane Welch, lovely little, clever ball to Darren Moran. Moran, will he get his first score? It's wide. And whatever way, kind of Darren seems to just slice it off the left, or slice it off the outside of his boot. He just didn't get it that time. And it's gone straight across the face of the goal and wide. A score that Hedford really needed. contesting for this ball but leaves it as is on McHugh and now it's Dylan Corbett oh, Pat Joyce. Yeah, Dylan Corbett now gets into Aaron McDonough Aaron McDonough racing forward as he loves to us Owen McHugh back now is for Sean Meenham fourth down to his right foot you'd know it's not his better foot or his favourite one for that matter now oh, bursting forward Declan Byrne from Tune. Burn. hits it long and well done by Brian Carey uh, down the back to get that off John Lee he makes a run but couldn't find him said he goes to Kevin Carey his brother to Dylan Corbett to John Leahy Hedford passing around to Darren Moran whose jersey is pulled referee uh, saw that good vision by the referee and it's going to be free to Hedford and he's leaving it to uh, Shane Walsh I think to take this free looking for it but I think she was a different different ideas on mind long ball to Sean Meenham who just lets it slip through his fingers and uh, did very well to win it back it's gone wide it's gone wide at the end of the day so uh, nothing out of that attack Tune goalkeeper urgent to get out of play but he's going to aim towards on McHugh's side again Pat Joyce up for it and wins it and fouled by the tune captain who is complaining and just showing that uh, things might be going too well so far. Pat will certainly take his time with his free. And uh, 
uh, Shane Welch is going to take it off the ground. So I think it's midfield that Chum seem to be really losing out and uh, not able to kind of win the ball to pump it to their corners. Because as you can see, they can do damage once they get in there. The problem is, uh, stop to midfield. Pulled there by uh, Fenton Joyce. It's going to be free to Chum. Take it quickly. John Donnan on the ball now. Reese O'Toole doing his best to hold them up. And he gets, he gets well to float. And by that, John Donnan not one bit happy with the way he's been treated. Owen McHugh just turning in the inside, looking for someone. He's going nowhere, but he gets the advantage. And now they get somewhere. Kevin at Kiri. Reese O'Toole. Aaron McDonough. Look at this for great play by Hedford. Hedford haven't seen football like this in years. Aaron McDonough just went to get past it. Bear in mind, Aaron only 18, 18 years of age. Sends it off to Sean Mullen, who just couldn't quite. The ball dropped short. And you know, the youth is really adding to the Hedford team here. And showing no bit of fear, not one bit of fear, and making it difficult for that Tum team to even get a few passes together. Now, Tum come on the attack once again to the corner race and back to try and stop him. But uh, it's well blocked and well done by Dylan Corbett, the big man, who's hard to knock down, sends it off to his, his uh, teammate Aaron McDonough to Sean Monaghan, who just loses out. And rather hard to hold on to that ball. Shum, the captain, blinds it in to John Donnan. John Donnan, Reese O'Toole, trying to make his life misery. John Donnan onto his left foot, that's a lovely score. And the fist into the air will tell you how much that means to him and the team. It's been well over five to ten minutes since Hedford last scored. And they really, really could do with the score. Oh, breaking four. Darren Moore sends that ball to Alan Meenham. Meenham, one against two. He's still doing it. A goal will be lovely here. It is! A goal for Hedford. Just look at the audience here today. Absolutely fantastic. That really lifts the goose for Hedford. And I must say, it's 2 10 to 12 points. Just as Hedford needed that score. They've got it. Alan Meenham. All credit goes out of him. One against two, raced in. And that was absolutely fantastic. To really lift the Hedford spirits. And one back again. This really could be Hedford's year. It's now or never. Last time Hedford won it was 1994. And Jer and Kevin Lee both were the management here today or present players on that team. So whatever advice they passed on to these young, talented players is certainly beginning to work as the spirits around Hedford are certainly well above normal. So Tune just got a lovely score there to uh, settle themselves, get themselves back into the action. But with the scoreline 210 to 13 points and 29 minutes played. The fist from Tommy Flynn to urge on his team shows it that this could be the year that Hedford win yet another Junior A Championship. And badly needed. Dylan Corbett up for that ball. But Tune has come back in it again. Holding off, fit to Joyce, doing his best. Comes in off the post. But it's gone over the bar. And another score for Chum. So the uh, Chum supporters absolutely outnumbered and silenced here in Pierce Stadium by this Hedford gang. As own Kerry, our own McHughish mother, looks for his teammates. Coming away, Darren Moore to Fenton Joyce. Fenton Joyce now finds Darren Moore once again, who finds Pat Joyce. And Mina and brothers are running inside if the ball had just been delivered right to them. And they were just inside. But uh, Tune come away. Hits going in left, right, and centre by Owen McHugh. Bouncing off his players. No, Brian Carey, can he handle this uh, 
the skillful Tune corner forward has been turning and twisting all day. No, Dennis Murray for Tune. Sent a lovely ball in there to the Tune. Uh, Michael Mannion. But it's out and it's gone for a wide ball. Headford. Just unstoppable. Their fourth, their power down the back. Allowing Tune to go absolutely nowhere. As you see there, once the Tune guy uh, gets the ball, you have three to four Hedford players surrounding them, not giving them air room to breathe. But uh, now, number 19 for Tune, boosts that into the full forward line. It comes back, three players again around the Hedford, not allowing them to go anywhere, and away it comes Kevin Perry, who wins the free, or wins advantage first order, free didn't give it to him, Aaron McDonald out coming away. He's been tugged, he was pulled, he wins the free. And surely the management goes out to say, keep up the good work. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. in 2013 would win a Junior A Championship, absolutely fantastic. 1994, the last time Hedford won Junior Championship. Tommy Ban, the captain, but this time with Niall Meenan captain, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. And Tommy Ban, the captain on that team, is here. We can just get a quick word with him if I could. Tommy Ban. 1994, you last won it. You're absolutely delighted. As is all the head players, that's really fantastic. Well done to each and everyone. Captain Niall Minahan will accept the trophy for Hedford. And picture there is Sean Minahan. As each Hedford player will make their way to the stand to get their, mer their medals, which has been a fan. Niall Minahan for Hedford. About to lift the championship junior A. Hedford our championship. They're champions today, it's Hedford Day, no doubt about it. They've been on top from start to finish. And the celebrations is theirs.
All right, I'm joined here by Tommy Flynn, the winning manager, of course. Fantastic day for you, Tommy, and congratulations. You must be absolutely delighted. Absolutely uh, delighted, but it's, uh, it's not a fantastic day, really, for me. It's a fantastic day for the parish of Clarence, so it is, and for the town of Hetford, and uh, for the club of Hetford, so it is, you know. And they've gone through a lot of hardship over the last couple of years, losing two county finals and things like that, and things didn't go right for them on, on them two occasions. Uh, at the beginning of the year I came in there, I told them we would be in a county final, and I told them we would win it. He came through today, but my God, was it hard work, though. So. I'm sure it was, Tommy. And I'm sure, as well as a physical physical strain, I'm sure a mental, mental issue had to really go into it. And uh, the mind the mind stream for today's game was absolutely crucial, I'm sure. Well, that was the biggest thing we had to get into the, the, lads, the, the heads of these lads, was uh, their mental attitude. They have the football ability, but it was the mental attitude. That was the most thing we focused on it since we beat uh, our Islands. And it stood out there today. The these boys wouldn't give in today. No matter what was thrown at them, they would not give in. And we won it, so we did. And that's the main thing. Well, congratulations, Tommy. And best of luck in intermediate. Okay, thank you. Sean, man, the match, congratulations. That's yours. So, how, how, what are your thoughts on the game, of course? Uh, well, you know, it was a tight game, from start to finish. Yeah. Was, there, was there any point where you felt that, you know, things weren't going your way? Hedford seemed to be always on top, didn't they, like? Um, well, we were on, on top from the start, right? Like, but the uh, second half was tough, you know. Drew came back at us, but um, we stuck to it. We worked hard and we got them in. Well, yourself and your two brothers up front, you definitely worked wonders. And, of course, uh, that left foot of yours is... It's very magical. Well, come here, intermediate next year. Have you any? I suppose you're not focusing on your focus on your celebrations. This one. Get through tonight now first. I mean, we can sit back next week, choose and we go through and see how we're fixed for next year. I know. So, exactly. once again, congratulations to Sean and uh, let's look in the future. Okay, thank you. Hello, we won our match. Yeah, let's get it. Hello. Hi. Hi. Yeah, I'm alive, I'm alive. No, but it's not television!